In this episode, we're going to be making a camera system that can follow the player around so that our player isn't going completely wildly out of scene every time we move around. So let's get started. Hey there, welcome back. So where we left off last time, we had just made our shots fire when we hold down the alt key and we made it so that we can change exactly how much time we want in between projectiles. I think one thing that I had done <laughs> just to make the uh, thumbnail for the last video look better is I set the alarm super low so that we could get this just insane amount of projectiles. You probably don't want that many yourself. So I set alarm zero equal to one. It should probably be like three at least. Uh, let's see if that's any better. But if you wanted to know how to get just like this insane stream of projectiles, yeah, that's not too bad. It's still pretty fast, but whatever. All right. So today we're going to be making a camera. It's going to follow our player around. And to do this, we could use GameMaker's built-in camera system here. So if we go to our room, we can see that in our room settings, uh, we already set up viewports and cameras. We set up the viewport part. Or did we? No, we did not. All right. Well, we're going to set that up today then. So if we go to our room, we want to take a look at how we have things set up. Currently, we have our width set to 1024, our height to 768, so that it's in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. At least it should be. That's not 16 by 9, I don't think. What well, ratio is 1024 by 768? I think it's, yeah. Let's do, um, let's do 1080 by 720. I think that's 16 by 9. Let's hit play just to see how that looks. Now we're gonna use the viewport to change the size of the room, but the main thing that we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be making it so that the camera smoothly follows the ship around. Because right now it's really easy to lose track of that little duder. So uh, what I wanna do is turn on this viewports and cameras option here. I wanna choose enable viewports and clear viewport background. I'm gonna open viewport to zero I'm going to make this one visible, which is important. As soon as you hit that, you see this thing show up. Uh, I want to make this have a... Let's go with a little bit... No, let's keep it here. Let's go 1080 by 720. Okay. And so you can see that white box resized itself. Now, for the viewport properties, I'm going to leave that... If I don't change it so that it's something that's in 16 by 9, uh, if I hit play, you're going to see it squish a little bit, and our, our pixel art's going to look not great. So you can see how like the ship changes its dimensions almost as it moves. It looks a little squished. That's not, that's not great. So I'm going to change my uh, viewport properties to 1080 by 720. Now, what you could do to make your camera follow system is you could set this object following and then the horizontal and the vertical border, all of that stuff. But that causes a bit of a jitter in GameMaker Studio 2. Um, here, I'll even show you what it looks like. I'm gonna make my room super big since I have my viewport set up. Let's make it like 5,000 by 5,000. So we've got this big room here. Now, if I set it up so that it just follows the player, so this object following, if I choose the player, I want you to see what that's gonna look like. And there's some other issues too, but let's just hit play here. So as I get close to the edge of the screen, do you see how it like kind of jitters? Like that's, that's no bueno. And when you get to the top of the screen, this camera won't go outside of the room. So I'm gonna set this to be nothing. And we're going to create our own camera system. So I'm going to go to um, my workspace here. Let's actually make some room so that we can work. And I'm going to create a new object that is going to be um, something that you can't see, but is something that we can control and code. And that's going to be a camera. So I'm going to right click, create a new object. I'm going to call this obj underscore camera. And this isn't going to get a sprite. However, it is going to get a create event. Now, 
uh, there's a couple different things that you can use to set stuff up in your camera and it's going to sound a lot more complicated than it is. Uh, there's two things that we need to make. We need to make a view matrix and we need to make a projection matrix. And I'll explain what those are for the most part, um, but I mean, there's, they sound way more complex than they actually are. So uh, what I want to do is I want to put in a description here. So this is going to be create camera values. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a view matrix for it. So I'm going to say view mat, which is going to be the view matrix, is going to be equal to matrix underscore build. And then this is to define the view matrix, is to define what it's looking at. And there's a lot of arguments that go in here. We have x from, y from, z from, x2, y2, z2, and then what's up. So I want my camera to have an x and y position that's just x and y. I want its z position to be uh, towards or away from the field of view. So that's going to be negative 10. Now for its x and y two positions, I'm going to say x, y, and then zero for the z position. So that means that it's above the field of view looking down. And then it needs to know what's up so that it's not like weirdly rotated. And up is straight up in the y direction. So that's zero on x, one on y, zero on z. So that's our that's our view matrix. Now we're going to create a projection matrix, which is going to make our game look like it should look like. It's going to look like a, a pixel game where things don't get smaller as they get farther away from the camera. Instead, everything kind of maintains a, a good size. So I'm going to call this uh, proj mat. And then this is going to be matrix underscore build. And we want to build projection orthographic. Now this needs to know the width, the height, Z near and Z far. So the near and far are what are called clipping planes. So the width and the height I'm gonna say is 1080 by 720. Z near I'm gonna to set to something relatively small like one. And Z far I'm gonna to set to something gigantic like 10,000. Okay. Now, next thing we need to do is we need to create our camera here. So I'm going to say camera is equal to camera underscore create, which is going to make a new camera that we're going to use. And then I want to set the view and projection matrices. So I'm going to do camera underscore set view matrix. And this needs to know what camera we're using, and we're using that camera we just created. And it needs to know what the view matrix is, which is view matrix. We need to do the same thing for the projection. Camera set projection matrix. We're gonna pass in camera and the projection matrix we just created. All right, cool. So. Let's just review this again because I feel like I did that kind of fast or with not super good explanations. The view matrix tells your camera uh, what it's looking at and what its angle is. So the camera in space is going to be at this XY position, but it's negative 10. So it's if you imagine the, the plane here, so our room, if you imagine this as being like a piece of paper, the camera is 10 units away from that paper towards you which is why there's that negative 10. So it's at the XY position it is, and then it's above the paper 10 units. What it's looking at is its own X and Y position, but at zero on the paper. So it's looking straight down. And then it needs to know what it considers to be up so that it's not angled strangely. And so that's one on the Y axis, straight up on Y. The orthographic uh, projection, we're gonna make it 1080 wide and 720 tall, and that's because that's the same as our room. Uh, I could set this to be, well, no, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to leave it 1080 and 720 hard coded here. The near clipping plane and the far clipping plane, these are more for 3D, but just know that this should be a small number and this should be a big number. We're going to create a camera and we're going to call it camera. 
and then we're going to set its view matrix to be the matrix we created and the projection matrix to be the matrix we created. All right, so that creates the camera. Now, I need to also have it follow something. So I'm going to call this um, target and target is going to be equal to obj underscore player. Uh, I also want to have a target X and a target Y position that I want the camera to be moving towards. So I'm going to make target underscore X and I'm just going to set that to X for now. Target underscore Y is equal to Y for now. All right, so that creates the camera. Now I want to, let's go to our room and let's just show you that this camera is working the way I want it to. So if I hit play now, I'm going to see the ship, um, which is exactly as we'd expect, because we can see that little white box around the ship. But if I add OBJ camera to the scene, oh, I need to select a layer. If I add OBJ camera to the scene, notice how it's way the heck over here. Uh, if I hit play and everything worked like I wanted it to, oh, no, I forgot to do something. Yep. Here's what I forgot to do. So I forgot to make the camera the active camera. So what I want to do here in my cameras create code is I want to say view underscore camera and I want it to be zero, which is the viewport for zero is equal to camera. So I'm going to save that. And now if I hit play, I shouldn't see the ship. I should see just a blankness because we're rendering around where the camera is. And there we go. So that's working like I think it should. Now what I want to do is I want to use the target and the target X and target Y so that it follows the player. So to do that, I'm going to create a step event. And for my description here, this is going to be follow player. And then what I want to do here is I want to have it move towards where its target is. And to do that, I'm going to create a value back in the create event called smoothing. And I'm going to set it to be, say, 5 for now. The bigger this value is, the more slowly the camera is going to go after the player. The smaller it is, the more quickly and snappier the camera is going to feel. I'm going to start with 5, but I'll show you what will happen if we make this value larger or smaller. If we go to our step event here, what we want to do is we want to say, uh, Uh, oh, sorry. We want to say x position plus equals, and we don't want to move, like we don't want to directly set x equals. Did I call it uh, target? Target dot x. We don't want to directly like have it directly go to where the player is. Instead, we want to say that we're adding to it, however far we are from the player, divided by that smoothing value, which is why as that value gets smaller, the camera moves more quickly. So we want to add to it target x minus rx divided by smoothing, and then do the same thing to y. So y plus equals target y minus y divided by smoothing. Now it doesn't know what those target values are yet. So what I want to say is if there is a target, so if target is not equal to no one, then I want to say that target x is equal to target dot x, so the x position of the target, and target y is equal to target dot y, the y position of the target. Then I have to it took me forever to figure out why it wasn't working. I have to make um, that view matrix again. So view matrix is equal to matrix build look at, and then I have to tell it the values again. X, Y, negative 10. So it's the same values as before. X, Y, 0, 0, 1, 0. And then I have to reset it to be the camera's matrix. So camera underscore set view matrix. The camera we're using is camera and the view matrix is view matrix. So I'm gonna save that. And 
when I hit play, we should see our camera kind of snap over to where the player is. It looked like the player was actually moving. Now you can see that the player can move a little bit before the camera follows. Let's take a look at what happens when we change that smoothing value. So let's make the smoothing value something relatively large, like say 25. So this means it's moving 1 25th of the way towards the player every frame. And it's, I mean, it's kind of Zeno's paradox where if you're moving 1 25th of the way every time and there's an infinite number of 25ths, you'll never get there, but GameMaker knows that you get close enough that it'll work. So if I make this 25, the smoothing value is relatively larger. You can see that the player has a bit of play before the camera is going to want to try to find them again. Now if I set it to something super small, like say 1.5, if you set it to 1, it's just going to jump right over. So let's hit play. So you can see that there's a little bit of give for how the player is moving. But more important, you can see that this isn't anywhere near as jittery as it was when we were uh, using GameMaker's built-in camera system. And if we go to the edge of the world, the ship doesn't just like disappear. So, all right, there we go. Um, we've got ourselves a custom camera system here. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, Leave them in the comments down below. Sorry, I lost my mind there for a second. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. You can join my Discord. Tons of really cool people there. Um, yeah, next time, uh, we're going to start adding just a few little effects, what's called a contrail to the ship, so that it looks like it's moving more. And then we'll start talking about laying out planets and stuff that we can move to. So um, thank you very much for watching, and have yourselves a wonderful day.